Hello Legends! In this video, I'm going to show you four new updates in NAN that will help you use data tables better and that will help you build better workflows. So the first set of updates are that we actually have two new operations within the data tables node. We have if row exists and if row does not exist. So I'm going to explain to you what these operations specifically do and then like what like how they translate into having a tangible impact on your workflows, like how you can actually use this in something that you're building. But first, I want to start off by going to a to my data table section and actually showing you the next set of updates, which are also extremely cool, uh, which is that when you create a new data table, you can create a new data table from scratch or you can import from a CSV. So this means if you've got existing data structures within Airtable, Superbase, Google Sheets, you can just download those items as a CSV and then import and create a brand new data table within NAN. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I have a, I just have a very simple data sheet within Google Sheets where I have the name, the belt level, and the years of training for different Jiu-Jitsu participants. I'm just going to go ahead and download this as CSV. And now back in NAN, I'm just going to drop that file into here. And there we go, it's uploaded. Now let's change this to members and create. And the cool thing here is that we actually have the opportunity to do some initial configurations for our data table when we're first uploading. So we've got a bunch of different data types, like four different data types within NAN data tables. These ones are just locked away because this is actually a string and the only option you can choose here is a string. But then for years, for example, because the, the value is numbers, like this is all strings, purple, Bart, David, Dan. These are names, these are strings, they have to be a string. This can be either a string or it can be a number as well. So let's see what it tells us. Yeah, number or string. If we want to enforce a strict policy around the data type that we want to accept here, let's just choose number. Let's create. And the cool thing is that the core rows, sorry, the core columns that you typically get when you create a new data table, they are still intact. So this stuff here, so this is uh, the unique ID of each of these entries. This is really good because actually this is the primary key of this database and that means that if we have one Bart in our database and he's a purple belt, for example, if you have another person called Bart as well, they'll have a different ID and that actually lets us differentiate between people of the same names because we can use this unique ID. It's never going to say one, one, one. It's always going to be a totally different number. So this is ID and then we have created at which is the date that this entry was created and then updated at. Right now, both of these are the exact same because we were created at the same time and therefore updated at the same time. But if we actually go across to our canvas and do some kind of operation from one of these nodes to change one of these values that already exists, then the updated at will actually be changed. So this is really cool because the ID created that and the updated at. This is like just default stuff when you're building a database, you want to have this stuff already. So NAN just wraps whatever data you're uploading with this default stuff, which is, yeah, this is just best practice for databases. Okay, so over on a canvas, let's imagine that we're actually building a workflow which has an inbound trigger, which is just like a webhook or some kind of opportunity for us to receive data into the workflow. I'm then going to use a set fields node so I can actually run some data through this workflow. But imagine that this is just me setting the value that's received from the webhook, for example. And I'm going to set it to Bart because we already know that we have someone called Bart in our data set. So from here, let's just execute, execute. And now I want to get the data tables. There we go. If row exists. And for our data, I'm going to use members and any condition. Let's just say that it is name and we're going to bring in this dynamically into this node. So I'm not going to fire this off just yet. I'm going to duplicate this and for this one we're going to get the other side which is the if row does not exist. So let's actually see what happens here. We have uh, some data set that we've introduced. We know that it exists in our data tables so if we execute this workflow what we see here is that if the row exists we're actually taking this live path and if the data set does not exist, we're not taking this path. So this is essentially an if statement after you're getting data from the data table. So um, I'll show you exactly how to use this in just a second, but to help us visualize this a little bit more, let me just copy this. So this is like saying, instead of doing if or does not exist, we're just getting rows and our condition is, uh, yeah, any condition for now because we just have one input variable. So let's say we actually fire this off and we're going to return some data set. In this case, I'm also going to do if the um, basically always output data. So if the value does not exist, we get an empty object. And over here, I'm going to use an if node. And I'm just going to say that if there is a data field and like this exists, 
So I'm going to say if this exists, it means that we return to some data set. And then when this fails, we actually have an empty object. So that does not exist, which means we're going to take the fail path. So let's actually shoot this off again and see what happens here. So this top one, it was just positive because we actually had Bart existing in our data set and this was negative down the bottom. So if we execute the sub workflow, what are we thinking is going to happen here? Do you think we're going to take the true route or the false route? So let's execute and there we go. So what we're actually just doing here is we're searching for the row. If the data set exists, we're taking the true route. And at the true route, we're just passing in our data set from the return of the get rows function. And for here, we're actually just passing in the data set from the edit fields function. So the difference is that we're taking the same path. So that's a similarity. But the difference is that we're returning a different set of object. So that's what happens when it's true. Now, if I just go into here and I edit this to be Bart's, which does not exist in our data set, if I just come into here, actually, B-A-R-T or B-A-R-T-S, it doesn't exist. So what do we think is going to happen here? Let's execute again. And the same thing. So that means that this if or that road does not exist, all we're doing here is essentially just searching for that information. If it's not there, we didn't take in the false route. So the top wire is not going to be live if you're actually doing this kind of parallel execution. All you're doing here is just using an if statement. And just like we saw before, over here we have an empty object. Uh, whereas over here we have the pass through object from the edit fields node. So how would you actually use this in practice? Like what's the actual purpose of using something like this? Well, let's say we have a we have an inbound webhook that receives some information and we have to process that information. Let's say we've got a Stripe call coming into our workflow and it says, hey, you have a new subscription for BART and we want you to like apply the payment, for example. Typically that would actually come with like a unique ID, like an event ID. So this specific payment, the event ID might be one, two, three, four. We might want to log that event ID in our database so that if we get a duplicate event by accident, we don't just charge BART 50 bucks twice. We first check, does it exist or not? If it doesn't exist, we charge them. If it does exist, we just can the operation entirely. So the best way to demonstrate that is, let's go, if it doesn't exist, what we want to do is actually add that into our database. So we will use the insert row over here, and we're going to go for remove the name, remove the belt. We'll just leave this empty for now. The data structure doesn't actually match the example that we're doing, but it's interesting nonetheless. And we're just going to add a new person called Bart, for example. So now this example is going to be twofold. Let's just neaten this up. So we have Bart inserted into here. The first operation we're going to see is actually going to go take the if or does not exist route, and it's going to add that data set into our data tables. So we come into here. Let's refresh this. And then we have Bart. We have null belt and null years because that's not part of our demo. But we just added Bart to the database, which means if I press this again, the exact same workflow, just execute it one more time. We're now going to take the top route, which if row does exist, which means that in this case, we might just like terminate the operation. We might log that it was a duplicate entry, whatever our routing is here. So this is really cool. Like this simple way of switching between operations, essentially you could do it with the get rows. I would just think like, what kind of data set do I want to have on the output? Am I happy to just pass through the data that I had initially? Or is it better for me to actually return that data if it does exist and then manipulate it in some way? Do I actually want to have the ID of the row so I can update Bart's belt or the amount of years that he's been training? It really depends on what kind of workflow you're working with. But now the final update that we have is that, so we have this database and for some reason we actually want to export this data and take it somewhere else. Previously, we'd have to actually build a workflow to get all the data, return all the rows, and then just export it in some way, converting it to a CSV with a workflow on the canvas. Now we have the, the other side of the coin where if we do want to export this, we can just go download as CSV. And now we just download the entire data set from our NAN data tables. So now if I just want to grab that, I want to bring this new exported data set that was just from NAN. Let's upload the CSV into our Google Drive folder, double click on this, and here we have that data. So we had Bart with a purple belt, David purple, Dan white, and then Bart, that's that new data set that we just had. So in this case, like why would you wanna export this data? Maybe you wanna take it from NAN and then plug it into a different system. Maybe you wanna share the data with someone on your team for observability. Maybe they cannot access your actual workflow or your data structures or your data tables. And you wanna just give them this information for some kind of security and compliance or just to even check some logs.
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. In case you haven't already seen, I have a free school community. I actually don't have any paid tiers right now. My goal is to just try and be active in here every single day, and I try and do some calls from time to time as well. So if you do want to get involved and just meet other technical people um, that might be similar to you, please come down and let's have a chat. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.